The 82-foot patrol boat Point Stewart was commissioned into the Coast Guard on March 17, 1967. For 37 years, until her decommissioning on August 26, 2001, she patrolled the waters off Southern California. In 1995, a Coast Guard series camera crew spent three days on board the Point Stewart to get an up-close and personal feel of what life is like on an 82-footer. The vessel's home port is out of Newport Beach, California. The type of vessel is 82-foot uh, coastal patrol boat. Uh, it was built in 1967. The ride on board is a little bit rough. Other than that, I have no problems with it. There's a lot of things that we do on board that are unique to this type of vessel. We go out on just about any call that comes around, we're out on it immediately, if not sooner. What I like best about working on an 82-footer is uh, you just you get a wide range of experiences on this cutter that you, you wouldn't get probably at uh, any other unit. Our main mission is law enforcement, but we get involved in everything from uh, search and rescue to uh, environmental protection to uh, towing in uh, NOAA buoys and things like that. So you get a little bit of everything, and you, you stay busy. You really do. It's it's kind of fun, actually. You know, you do a lot of different things. Point-class cutter with a crew of 10, fully fueled and fully uh, laden with stores. Um, basically, can go out on a weak patrol. Maximum speed is 20 knots. At 20 knots, we burn an intense amount of fuel, which would obviously shorten the amount of time that we're out. If we uh, are making a conservative patrol effort and uh, are not trying to intercept a particular vessel at, a, at such a high speed. Um, our maximum range is in the neighborhood of 1,500 nautical miles. Um, usually a cruising speed of about 10 knots or something like that would enable us to reach that. Um, the range is affected by sea states um, and patrols obviously are affected by where you can take on fuel and where the contacts you're looking for are. This is uh, basically where all the engineers and some of the seamen come and stand there and watch. On every hour and every half hour, we have got to come down here, make a visual round on every hour, log a round of all the equipment and machinery in the engine room. They're rated at uh, 900 horsepower each. Uh, we have two of them, a port and starboard, number one and two. Also, right in the middle, we have our uh, diesel generators. We've got two, but we only need one for, uh, for underway. Um, my name is uh, Mike Zafina. We're uh, here on the Coast Guard Cutter Point Stewart. Okay. This is my galley. We have a, a crew of 10 enlisted and one officer. In port, we normally feed everyone right at once, family style. Um, underway, it's kind of shifts because there's people on watch. And if you're not on watch, then you're sleeping, getting ready for your next watch. And if you're not sleeping, then you're eating. You don't have a lot of room in here, so I have to utilize everything that I have. And um, uh, there's not a lot of space either, so um, it's kind of, you know, clean as you go. You do one thing, and then it's on right on to the next, and get it all together, and hopefully you get the finished product comes out the way you want it. <laughs> How's the cook? Oh, the cook's great. Uh, he puts out uh, pretty, pretty, uh, outstanding meals considering the conditions he has to, uh, to deal with, uh, his cramped cooking quarters and the seas that he has to cook in. Uh, yeah, he does a great job. With 
the reefer in the freezer and my dry stores, which is right here. Um, I can feed the crew for about eight days. On a boat like this, I'm the only cook on board, so I deal right from going to the store, purchasing, um, bringing the food back, storing it, um, preparing the food, and then at the end of the month, also doing all the um, accounting for the money used for um, the, the dining facility here. Um, basically, it's like a small restaurant, so. Cook's great. Mike does a good job. You know, he uh, tries to get the meals done on time when he can. They, they send him out to do boarding sometimes, which takes away from uh, his cooking abilities. But he does his best. And he's one of the few cooks I've seen who can cook in, in bad weather conditions. And that's not easy to do, because this boat really rocks and rolls in bad weather. And when you're down there below in the galley, that's one of the worst places to be. But he still manages, puts out good meals. Okay, I'll give you a tour of our bridge. Oh, go ahead. This is our navigation light panel where we energize our navigation lights. Roger. We've got our chart table here. You see Seaman Clark. Steve here is uh, plotting a fix. Up here we have Loran C. Electronic navigation system. Over here we have our Magellan GPS global positioning system similar to the type that you would find on many fishing boats and just about any vessel at, at this point. We have our radios with a secure ultra high frequency, high frequency, and very high frequency. Here we have our throttles and engine controls, our helmsman, our helm, rudder angle indicator, and our magnetic compass, which lights up for nighttime use. Here's our SBS-64 radar, surface search radar, which we use to pinpoint contacts. It's an automatic direction finder. We can DF on uh, several, or just about the entire marine band, everything from 150 kilohertz through 4,600 kilohertz, various marine signals using that. This is the cutter's thermometer where we can indicate feet and fathoms up to a total of 100 fathoms. One of the most interesting parts about working on the A2 is that all of the planning, or almost all the planning, is done by the ship itself. So it's, it's up to us to put together resources and we get help from our shore stations at district and group and oftentimes they set up operations for us. But on a day-to-day -day basis, most of the planning is, is done. We're told you're going to patrol for this period of time and it's up to us to come up with a great patrol plan. Um, but we're a small ship. We don't have a huge amount of radar coverage or, or anything like that. Uh, so we have air support helping us uh, find these contacts. Helicopters or fixed wing aircraft. And more recently, which will be starting tomorrow, Coast Guard Auxiliary Aircraft over flying an area providing contact information to us. Uh, basically, the, it's as simple as a helicopter flies over or the aircraft flies over a contact and radios the ship with the position and course and identity of the contact. So, uh, using Coast Guard Auxiliary planes is a, a, a new step down here actually working with a, a cutter. But we'll see how it works out tomorrow. I'm sure it'll be fun.